Um, well then, let's just jump right in. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, did you want to introduce yourself and your organization? Uh, my name is Kathy Williams, and I'm the co-founder of Westman Mental Wellness and Suicide Prevention Association. And how long has that been, the organization, been in existence now? Um, our first walk was in 2015, so we've been we've been going for a few years. Um, it, it's taken us a while to get a little traction, like. Mm -hmm. um, We've been through some name changes and lots of growing pains. Um, so in 2020, we um, attained our charitable status. And so things have kind of grown from there once we got our charitable status. Mm -hmm. So are you comfortable sort of talking about how the organization came to be? Yeah. Um, it started um, as part of myself and my husband's um healing process um we lost our son to suicide in 2009 um so in 2011 we attended a walk in oak bank manitoba um that was put on in honor of a young lad who had, had also died by suicide so after going to that walk for a couple of years we thought, why not try doing this in West Man? Mm -hmm. And so that's when we start the first walk we had in 2015. And it's it's actually been a really big part of both of my husband and I's recovery mm -hmm. and dealing with the grief and the loss that we, we had suffered through. And did you find, um, you know, prior to 2015, when you wanted to take this on, was there a lack of that kind of community and resources in, in the Westman area? Um, there was a suicide bereavement group in, in Brandon, but I would say overall, there wasn't a lot of support and there wasn't a lot of places to turn to. So up until that point, we just kind of, did did it on our own. We we pushed through, and um, I would I that's something I would like to see that we could be a part of is um, more supports for for the families of right. suicide because it is it is a very hard journey. It's I mean losing anyone a child especially is is really hard. But what we found was. And I think it has got better since then, but just the stigma and the stuff and negativity, I'll say, that surrounded suicide, it was it was very hard to feel that you could talk about it openly because there was always that kind of negative pullback once right. the word suicide was mentioned. So I hope that we, I think things are getting better, but I hope that is something that we could definitely work on. Mm -hmm. in this area because that's what I wanted to ask do you if, if you were finding that now that mental health is much more part of the conversation in general are you finding that stigma kind of not maybe disappearing but receding a bit I, I would say so um, I really think that COVID had a big impact on uh, big people feeling that they could talk about their mental health because all of a sudden it wasn't just you here and you here it was kind of everybody was in the, that same boat and yeah. i think it did open the door a lot for discussion and um, people to admit that they're struggling and, and to seek help right i think we have a bit further to go but it is definitely i would say getting better going in the right direction anyway yeah uh so what sort of you know you, you talked about the walk that you started with I think there are also some other things that that the group is doing now uh, as far as you know events fundraisers that sort of thing oh i've lost your audio uh oh can you hear me now yeah okay great so i'm just asking about uh, like additional events now that the you know i think the group has grown a bit since 2015. i think i saw something about another fundraiser that was going on things like that yeah, um, our walk is still our big fundraiser. Um, we had our walk in May of this year. We had 
it was just an absolutely what phenomenal event it um uh, we we had a huge turnout um we did have uh, mental health education resources and stuff available but we really got a lot of community support and we raised over $18,000 this year um the other two fundraisers we've got coming up is Carberry they have a farmers market every Wednesday throughout the summer and they have a barbecue so we have been invited this will be our second year going to Carberry and we are doing the barbecue there on August 16th okay so that will um and then August 19th we are having our second annual golf tournament here in Surus and then that'll that as far as we have planned that sort of our fundraisers for this year but and so you are based in Surus. I think a lot of people assume you're in Brandon, but you are actually based in Surus. We are actually based in Surus. Yes, we do have committee members from Brandon, but we are Surus based. And uh, do you find you have a lot of connection, you know, sort of throughout Westman at this point? Because I certainly found out about you because you came here to Nipoa for an event that we right. were having. Um, yes, we, um, like I said, this, since we got back doing our walk after COVID, um, things have really opened up for us and we have been doing a lot of networking throughout Westman and it's been really good because we've talked to a lot of people. We've found out what communities could be looking at potentially for um, us to help out with. And um, I feel that we've been very well received once people started to realize who and what we, what we're about. And so in what ways are you sort of able to, uh, support communities, individuals, other organizations? Um, well, we do have a community to support um, available. Um, if a community has a project, an individual, it doesn't matter if it's an individual or an organization, and they would like to approach us for funding. If they go to our website under community support, there is an application form there. Um, we supply um, funding up to 2500 right now. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have policies and procedures around what, what right. we're funding, but all of that is available on the website. So we have supported, um, to date, we have supported eight different um, organizations okay. throughout West, well, mostly in this area, Suris, uh, Brandon area um, and we've given out $14,000 in funding so if anyone is interested go to our website see if you fit in with those guidelines and then fill, you can fill out your application send it to us um, we do have limited resources of course so um, once that this year I think our grant limit just based on our income was would be around 8,000. Mm -hmm. So once we reach that limit, of course, we'll have to, to hold off till next year. But you know, we, for sure, contact us, see where we're at. And see if we can help out. And as you've been networking through the Westman area, um, what sorts of groups and organizations have you found out there? Is there like a wide variety of different types of groups? Are there very few of them out there? So what is there available for people out there? Um, as far as the groups we've helped and what or we've helped them with. Or... Sort of network with, contacted, um, done presentations for, that sort of thing. Yeah, so we have worked, um, we, we worked with the Oak Lake School. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a mental health wellness day in May. It was a great event. Uh, but we helped fund that. And we've worked with um, the West Bad Regional Library. We did uh, supported a workshop that they did on um, the effects of uh, social media on mental wellness. Uh, we've worked with a couple of seniors groups. We worked with Health Checks out of Brandon to put on their event. Uh, we also worked with uh, Habby out of Senior uh, 55 plus. Um, throughout COVID, uh, we did a project with them um, to be for seniors to be able to be have access to technology to con you know be in touch with family and friends and stuff mm -hmm. uh we have worked with uh, the 
youth group had branded, we provided funding for them to do um, mental health first aid training. Uh, we've also, uh, the uh, so I just got to check the, the day, name here, um, Brandon University Student Accessibility Services. And that project was to provide a safe community programming for students with disabilities, enhancing mental wellness by enhancing sense of belonging, belonging skill building, and increasing self-esteem. We've also worked with the Men's Resource Center. Um, of course, we, we supported um, Jeff's Sober Social at Nipua. Right. Yeah. And uh, right now, we're uh, just in the process process of working with uh, Riverdale Palliative Care Committee. They're they're doing a day long um, event to uh, support for mental health support for persons in palliative care and their families and caregivers. So those that's what we have um, supported so far. And that a lot of that is just through our networking and and them becoming aware of us and and nice. um, yeah. Um, are you finding too, because, because you have kind of been out there in the community, who are there specific demographics that are sort of accessing these resources, whether it's, you know, young people, whether it's seniors, um, or are you finding it's really across the board? Um, I think really it has been across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, we've worked like with the school in Oak Lake and we've like done the seniors events. Um, I was quite um, happy to support the Men's Resource Center because um, mm -hmm. having lost my son, and I think that that's something we're looking at possibly this fall. Um, we we're, we haven't got anything booked, but doing an event for men, because I think men kind of get, I don't know if left out is the right word, but there's still kind of that. Um, Socially, men are less encouraged to talk, I think. Yes. So we thought we would try and have an event um, to encourage men to, you know, come out. They don't have to talk about their mental health, but at least acknowledge that um, we're out there and that it that they, that it's not something that they need to hide from. Mm -hmm. So I think we have covered a fairly broad demographic. I know one that we sort of tapped into here that I maybe didn't even realize myself was an issue was our newcomer community um, and dealing with mental health issues within the newcomer community, um, which was sort of I, I think I'm discovering, I guess, right now, has any of that been coming your way at all? Or is that sort of a new area? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having problems with the audio a little bit again. I'm sorry, I'm yeah, bad mic here. Um, okay. So one of the things in our area that I've been discovering, um, there's a specific needs in mental health is our, in our newcomer community because we have a yes. lot of integration in the area. Is that something that you've seen um, organizations coming up for or reaching out, or is that something that's a little underserved right now? I, yeah, I think you're, it is probably an underserved area. Uh, we haven't worked with with um, any group or, or community on that particular subject, but I think it is something that is very, yeah, pr pronounced right now. And if anybody has any idea of something they'd like to do, to looking at working with with them. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned the kind of right when we started talking that one of the things you really kind of wanted to get into was making sure that there was family resources available. Um, now, right now, your your charitable organization provide funding to others. Is that something you're looking at branching into within your own organization is providing those services, or are you looking to sort of support another organization doing that? Yeah, like for us, we are looking at doing some some projects now. Um, up until now, we haven't had the resources to um, maybe pull together some some events that we wanted to. So it was our idea was look to the communities, let them decide what their need is, and then come to us for the funding. Right. Um, because we have a little bit more money now and because we also have more volunteers, we are looking at um, doing more projects that we've initiated because of our networking and realize, oh, there's a need there. We mm -hmm. can fill that. 
and plan an event around that. So we're kind of doing both, I guess. So you're still kind of growing and developing into what 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 your organization is going to be. Right. And I really, like, I would really like to see, ideally, um, from the grassroots level, like, I would like to have the people in the community, like I said, they know, you know, if there's a certain issue that they would like to see, build on that, build on their their knowledge of what what their community needs we can help support it we could we're not mental health professionals but if they have something in mind we could be a resource to help them find the speaker or um you know the education resources so and that yeah that is one of the big things i think is that information and education um sort of yeah. i noticed on your website that that's something you're really sort of trying to provide as much as you can of is that sort of what yeah. you feel is also your role Oh, I lost you again. Sorry. <laughs> I know we're lagging a bit here. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, just just on on the area of sort of education and resources that I I have noticed that you know on your website you're certainly trying to provide a great deal of that. Um, yeah. And is that something you feel that's sort of one of your strengths and one of your roles in in the uh, sort of mental health community? I uh, I think so. I think sometimes when people are are struggling, they're not really sure where to go. Mm -hmm. So if we can provide them a little bit of direction, or even if a person was struggling and reached out to us like that's this has happened before, then I could contact the person that they need to be in touch with and say, hey, you know, I talked to this person, you know, and kind of connect them. We can't do the counseling ourselves because we're not trained, right, but right. we definitely want people to know that those resources are out there. And if we could be of any help in connecting them, then that, yeah, that's definitely part of part of what we, we do. So in the landscape, you know, 2023, in the 2023 mental health landscape, where are the biggest gaps right now, do you think? Um, well, the information that I've um, received from, you know, different agencies I talk to, um, elderly men mm -hmm. is the biggest, that is the, right now, that is the biggest, highest suicide rate really in Canada is among like elderly men. So there's, there's definitely a gap there. I would say, I don't know what the answer to that is right now, but that's, obviously something, a topic that will be discussed and, you know, see if there is something that we could, yeah. could do. I think that's a hard demographic to, yeah. um, oh, for sure. With in a sense that, you know, of the old school kind of way of men don't show that those feel their emotions and just have to deal with it. Um, but definitely it's worth yeah. trying. I know here in Nipah we have um, a chapter of the men's shed, um, and one of their you know the guys get together and they work on hands-on projects. But one of their mandates is to provide that community um, for mental health for for men retired men. Yeah, sort of their their area. So I I think I absolutely agree that's sort of an area where that needs attention. Yeah, and you know just even like that to you know get together and it it make it not even maybe feel like it's it's a mental health event but in the end it is because they're yeah. connecting with their friends and they're they're doing things and and that's yeah. all part and parcel of of good mental health absolutely but, yeah now for people who want to reach out to you um we know the avenue through the website if they want to apply for any of the funding if people simply wanted to date the organization how do they do that uh they um uh, well we do have a Gmail address. It's uh, westmanwellness at gmail.com. Um, oh. They can reach out to us that way. Or um, my number is 204-721-4944. Mm -hmm. And I'm certainly happy to field any calls and make connections or, you know, answer questions. 
so people yeah yeah feel free to reach out great um thank you for, for all that information is there sort of a message that you want to leave everyone with today well i think we're on the right track but i think just if you're struggling with mental health issues seek help don't try and be thinking you're being brave or strong or it makes you look weak if you do reach out get the help you need because you're going to find that when you do things are going to just be so much better for you and that that's the whole that's really the purpose right we just want people to to get the help they need to lead a happy productive life Thank you so much for that and for everything that you do. Well, thank you. And thanks. Thanks for spending time with me today. Well, thank you for having me.